You know how the old saying about March goes, in like a lion, out like a lamb. This March, however, likely to go out with a roar as a wet and windy system crosses the UK on Friday. It's not the first wet and windy system we've seen this March. It's been a wet month so far as this map clearly shows the rainfall amounts compared with the March average up until the 27th of the month. A lot of blues on the map there, especially across England, Wales, into southern Scotland and Northern Ireland. That shows where we've seen above average March rainfall up till the 27th and some parts of England have seen more than twice their rainfall. Western Scotland, well, here we've seen drier than normal rainfall. It's worth just to put a bit of extra context on this, comparing it with February's rainfall, which was uh, almost an exact reversal. Very dry across England, Wales, southern Scotland, Northern Ireland. Average or slightly wetter than average for Western Scotland. So it's been a quite a change. Will we see another change into April? And how much rainfall are we going to see during the rest of this week? How strong will the winds get on Friday? These are the questions I'm going to be answering today in this edition of The Deep Dive. If you like these longer form, in-depth forecasts that we regularly do on Tuesday and you've not hit subscribe yet, I do encourage you to do so. That means you won't miss these when we put them out in the future. And of course, every added subscriber is like a vote for us to do more of these kinds of forecasts. So it's been a wet March so far. We've got more rain on the way, but Monday was a little drier. Let's take a look at the radar and actually more specifically, let's take a look at the uh, mixed phase precipitation radar. This shows where we've got uh, rain in blue and where we've got uh, snow in white. And overnight, we've got cold air in place across the UK, rain arrived, and we've seen some falling snow over the higher parts of Northern England as well as Scotland. But as this rain's moving in, well, it also contains some milder air. It's a warm front. And so those snow levels are going to get higher and higher through the afternoon. By the end of the day, really, the snow non-existent across the UK. It's going to be disappearing above the higher slopes of Scotland. And so we're going to see predominantly rain. And uh, it's going to be a damp day. This is uh, mid-afternoon. You can see those outbreaks of rain affecting Scotland. It's northern and eastern England. Further dribbles of rain and drizzle across uh, Wales and southwest England. A lot of low cloud in this area covering the hills. Misty and murky out there. One place where it's turning brighter, however, Northern Ireland. And as a result, there's this temperature contrast for the rest of the day. Uh, we're going to see quite chilly conditions, actually, where we've started with cold air in the east and northeast, and we've got that rain now moving in, 6 to 8 Celsius. But for Northern Ireland, 13, 14, perhaps even 15 Celsius, and likewise for southwest England and West Wales. If we do get some brightness, temperatures up at uh, the, well, low teens, I suppose. Now, tomorrow, if we switch forward, I mentioned that it's a warm front moving in. Tomorrow, even higher temperatures expected much more widely across the UK. I think generally 12 to 14 Celsius, but in some spots, as you can see, we're looking at 15. And there's the potential, if we zoom in a bit further and put on a few extra locations, there's a potential, for example, somewhere like Rill to see 17 Celsius. And then into Thursday, skip forward to Thursday, is that on Thursday? Uh, even higher temperatures in some places. This time, uh, parts of northern England, perhaps quite widely actually across northern and eastern England, 15 degrees, but in some spots, uh, the potential for 15, 16 Celsius, not showing up on the map there, but to take my word for it, 15, 16 Celsius, perhaps even 17 degrees in one or two spots on Thursday. So temperatures are rising. It might be a bit cold, gray and damp out there this afternoon but it's going to end up being milder grey and damp for Wednesday and Thursday. And actually, there'll be further spells of rain over the next few days now that the Atlantic weather is back. We saw this ridge of high pressure as we started the week, but as we go through the next few days, really skipping forward to the uh, middle of the afternoon on Wednesday there, and you can see after another grey and damp start to the day, we've got some heavier rainfall arriving by the evening across parts of Wales and southwest England. A strong wind here, gales near some of these exposed coastal parts towards the southwest, 
And again, a lot of cloud on the map, spells of uh, rain through the day, but the rain turning heavier and more persistent into the afternoon and evening across southwestern areas. And then that rain pushing into central parts during the evening into northern England, northern Ireland before clearing away. Then what we've got coming along for Thursday, let's take off the cloud cover there for a moment. What we've got for Thursday is uh, showers generally, and those showers are going to be fairly lively. They're going to be uh, coming in quite thick and fast from the south, uh, west, southwest. And with the winds coming in from the west, southwest, another breezy day, I think some of these showers could align into, into bands. Uh, so, for example, where we've got a convergence line across southwestern areas, perhaps, or uh, into parts of uh, through the Bristol Channel into the Midlands, you could see these uh, areas where the, the winds converge and that forces lines of showers to develop one after the other. So in some spots, quite a number of showers coming through, 30 millimetres through the day. And these showers will be lively, gusty winds, a hail, thunder, a possibility. And they'll especially be affecting west and southwestern areas, drier towards the east. Uh, and as I mentioned, that's where the higher temperatures will be on Thursday, 16 or even 17 Celsius, if we get some sunshine coming through. But, yeah, there will be quite a few showers coming in from the, the west-southwest on Thursday. This is what we call a returning polar maritime air mass. And so let's take a look at the bigger picture. What we've got on Thursday is the air coming in around this very large area of low pressure. That's what's bringing us some weather fronts over the next couple of days. But the air is coming in. It initially comes in from the northwest, then it comes all the way around the bottom of this low, and then it picks up some milder air and some moisture as it pushes up from the west southwest. So the air starts off relatively cold coming in from the northwest, then it picks up some of that warmth and moisture at the lower levels. But because you've got cold air above, you've got the moisture and the warmth at the bottom, it creates this instability. You get these big rising, uh, towering cumulus and cumulonimbus clouds that, that produce a lot of showers and uh, the air at the moment very unstable because you know we've got the jet stream coming in from the west southwest we've got low pressure both at the surface and higher above and in fact on Thursday itself that upper low which you can just about make out if you uh, extrapolate from the position of the jet stream crosses the UK I'll just pause it there so you've got the jet stream coming in like this and around that jet stream you've got this upper area of low pressure at where the jet stream sits and you've got this lower area of low pressure. And so all these factors, where the air is coming from and also the uh, low pressure at the surface and the low pressure higher up cause tremendous instability in the atmosphere and that's why we're seeing some heavy downpours on Thursday. Also some sunshine mixed in, but yeah, never too far away from a shower cloud I think on Thursday. Then this little feature comes along for later Thursday to bring some more persistent rain in and the potential for some stronger winds. Now, there's some uncertainty about this low at the moment and to understand why, let's go back to the time of recording or at least a little bit later in the day. And what we can see is that low, it's originated over the USA as a cluster of thunderstorms it's now, over the next 24 hours, moving into the Atlantic and it's track being pushed along by the jet stream. But watch what happens around this time. It just moves on to the cold side of the jet stream and that helps to spin it up. So around about this time, it's in this part of the jet stream where you see development of areas of low pressure. Uh, it's the cold side of the jet stream, but more specifically, it's on what we call the left exit of the jet stream. So this darker purple area here, that's where you've got the strong core of the jet stream. And it's on the left, the forward left side of that. It's what we call the jet left exit. That is a region of the jet stream where if you get a low pressure underneath it, then it can spin it up quite quickly. And that's what we're seeing. So over the next, uh, couple of days, the jet stream carries that low along the, uh, across the Atlantic. Then, as it moves under this region of the jet stream, which is favorable for low pressure development, 
you can see it spins up, it adds more isobars and it deepens. It deepens before it reaches the UK, but nevertheless it does uh, approach the UK as a fairly well-developed feature, a fairly deep low. Now the uncertainties for this stage on Friday, so the early hours of Friday we're talking about as the low approaches the UK, the uncertainties are about the track and the depth of that low. There are only slight differences between the computer models, but what we're seeing is uh, differences in terms of how far north and how far south the low will go, its uh, central pressure, so its depth, and the shape of it, how tightly packed those isobars will be, whether it's going to be a small but intense low or whether it's going to be spread across a larger area. So those are the main uncertainties that we're talking about. What we're looking at most likely to happen is uh, a wet and windy spell for southern parts of the UK. Not such uh, unsettled, the weather won't be as unsettled further north. And then it moves through during the weekend, slowly clearing on Saturday and into Sunday. But the peak winds likely during the early hours or at least the uh, start of the day on Friday. Just to give you an idea of some of those uncertainties that we're talking about, this is the European model and it's looking at six o'clock on Friday morning. And this is a snapshot from 50 runs of that computer model. So we don't just run these computer models once, we run them 50 times and each time there's a small tweak at the start to take into account chaos theory and to see if any of those small tweaks leads to big differences and in the later stages of a forecast. This is a snapshot at six o'clock on Friday morning and quite a number of the different uh, ensemble members, these different simulations show a deep area of low pressure crossing southern parts of the UK with the strongest winds through the English Channel, a risk of gales through the Channel and into northern France. A few of these computer runs don't show anything much at all in the south. For example, number seven there, number 26. So we've got to bear in mind the fact that a minority of computer model runs don't particularly develop that low because it perhaps doesn't quite reach that developing area or the developmental area of the jet stream, for example. However, the vast majority do show something that travels across the south of the UK, but brings the strongest winds through the English Channel and into northern France. There is that risk, though, of disruptive winds for the south of the UK, along the south coast. So that's something we've got to bear in mind. It looks either way like a wet start to uh, uh, Friday. Here's a snapshot. This is the same sort of time, 7 a.m. So we're waking up on Friday and we're seeing this spell of wet weather across England, Wales, into southern Scotland, Northern Ireland as that low moves through. And you can see the wind circulation with the low centred somewhere across Wales and the Midlands in this computer model run. And it looks likely that Wales and the southwest will see the highest rainfall totals, uh, 30 to 50 millimetres, perhaps a touch more over some of the more exposed hills, for example. Now, the wettest and windiest period is during the morning on Friday. Then... Through the day, that low is relatively slow to clear. It's still going to bring bands of rain and showers in from the east and into the uh, west of the UK there, into Northern Ireland, and, and showers as well. So that low by Saturday morning is sitting out in the North Sea. And around that, we've got a lot of cloud, a lot of low cloud, actually, for eastern parts of the UK. So quite a lot of har and fret for North Sea coasts and a lot of rain and drizzle and spells of rain coming in from the northwest to affect Western Scotland, Northern Ireland, into Wales. And even where we haven't got the rain, I think there'll be showers because we've got this low pressure close by. It's going to be feeling colder as well this weekend. Temperatures back towards average after a, a warm spell over the next few days. But it is a gradual settling down process through the weekend. So playing that forward and the low pressure moves into the continent. And what we'll see, and it will take some time, is the rain will tend to fizzle out by the time we get to Sunday in many spots, especially towards the west. And in the west, the skies are likely to brighten by Sunday, after, Sunday afternoon with just some showers into parts of western Scotland, Wales, western fringes of England and Northern Ireland. But otherwise, the brightest skies by Sunday will be in the west. I think we'll keep a lot of that low cloud and some rain and drizzle into the east, however, on Sunday. And it's going to feel quite chilly with this uh, wind off the North Sea as well. So 
gradually improving through the weekend, gradually turning drier and perhaps a little brighter. But overall, through the weekend, it's staying unsettled because that low pressure is going to be sticking close by. It's going to be slow to pull away. Now, what happens beyond that? Because, of course, by this stage, we're into April. And is April looking any more settled compared with what we've seen during March? Of course, during March, what we've had is high pressure over Greenland. And what we've seen during March and what we'll continue to see is higher pressure towards the north of the UK and lower pressure towards the west. So on, on a south shifted jet stream has to be said. So this is, this is in the seven day period, 3rd of April to the 10th of April. And this is the most likely pressure anomaly. And it's still got higher pressure towards the north of the UK, low pressure out in the Atlantic, sending some further systems in. But what we're likely to see through next week, actually, is something of a coal. That means we're in between weather systems. And it looks like we're not going to have either a strong high pressure or strong low pressure in charge. Low pressure will continue to try and feed systems in from the west whilst we'll increasingly come under the influence of higher pressure towards the north. And next week, it's almost like a transition period between uh, the really unsettled weather that we've seen through March with low pressure coming in uh, from the west quite frequently to affect uh, much of England and Wales in particular. And then the signs are that the week after next, things are likely to turn less unsettled. And this is the Easter period we're talking about, of course. And it looks likely that around Easter weekend, we'll have higher pressure. That's what this is showing here. Higher pressure towards the north, lower pressure towards the southwest, and something a little drier, something less wet and windy across the UK. Now, in this kind of setup, of course, you'd have a bit of an easterly airflow, but this wouldn't be a kind of a wintry easterly temperatures are most likely to be sitting around average, but there's always the chance that it will be a bit colder than average across the north and the east of the UK if we do pull in some colder air. And of course, winds off the North Sea do bring with them some mist occasionally at this time of year. And they are still cold winds. It's going to still feel cold in that wind on the North Sea. The main uncertainties by the time we get to the Easter weekend and beyond is how much that high pressure will lead to a chilly easterly and how much it will lead to just brighter skies and therefore feeling more pleasant in the sunny spells that will more likely develop across northern parts of the UK. The other uncertainty is how much low pressure will continue to feed in from the south. But what we can say is that it's most likely to be drier towards the north and most likely to be wetter and more unsettled towards the south. This kind of setup where you've got higher pressure towards the north and a bit more of an easterly airflow isn't uncommon at this time of year. You're, you're actually more likely to experience it in April and May than at other times of the year, which is why I always say that Scotland's a lovely place to holiday in May because it does tend to get uh, reasonably nice weather with uh, an easterly airflow in May, particularly in the west of Scotland. Uh, so, yeah, that's my tip for holidaying in the UK anyway. And as far as the uh, rest of the period is concerned, really the signals are pretty muted, to be honest. So what we can say is that it's going to stay really quite unsettled for the rest of March. Uh, risk of some strong, perhaps even some disruptive winds for southern parts of the UK uh, as we end the month. But then low pressure gradually pulling away through the weekend, something a little drier for the start of next week. And then this transition through April into the Easter weekend of something less unsettled, especially towards the north, and uh, the chance still of some low pressure uh, occasionally influencing the south. Uh, but that's all I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. And as I said at the start, if you did enjoy it, please do hit subscribe and it will help encourage us to do more of this sort of thing in the future. Bye-bye.